On the 14th of December 2020, Health Secretary Matthew Hancock announced the emergence of a new variant of coronavirus that is spreading across the country and could be linked to the rapid spread of the virus across the southeast region of England. In this video, I will be explaining some of the differences we see in this new variant of the coronavirus, the implications this causes and what we have to do next. First things first, it isn't uncommon to see mutations within the genetic materials of viruses. This happens all the time. Variants can occur every time the virus replicates itself. In order for new virus particles to form and bud off from the human cell to infect other cells, new viral proteins and components need to be made, along with the need for the virus's genetic material to be copied. So if we start from the beginning of viral entry into cells, as discussed in my last video, once the virus enters human cells, its genetic material is released. The host, i.e. our ribosomes, then read this genetic material to produce the proteins that the genetic code codes for. Now this will be, for example, the polyproteins PP1A and PP1B, which are processed, i.e. cut into pieces to leave a series of non-structural proteins. Uh, and these assemble together to form the replication transcription complex, RTC. This RTC, by reading the whole viral RNA genome, produces other RNA molecules, including copies of the full-length viral RNA genome and the subgenomic mRNA molecules that ultimately encode other viral proteins, such as the spike protein. Ultimately, these will all be used to form new viral particles that can bud off from the cell. However, mistakes can be made at this copying stage by the replication machinery replicating the genetic material, leading to the introduction of different pieces of code that can ultimately change a specific building block, i.e. amino acid, in the making of the protein. With this specific variant, we observe a different amino acid at the 501st amino acid position of the spike protein, a tyrosine replacing an asparagine. The concerns that are arising with this specific mutation at position 501 is the fact that this region is key in the spike protein's interactions with ACE2, which enables the virus to fuse with and enter the human cell. Therefore, it may potentially affect how easily the virus infects our cells. Another concern is that could this have an impact on the effectiveness of the current vaccines in circulation? Because of course, if the vaccine stimulates our body to make antibodies and immune defences against the asparagine 501 virus and not the tyrosine 501 virus, would these antibodies still bind and lead to the destruction of the viral particles? So, scientists will have to answer these questions experimentally, comparing the rates of transmission of the two viral variants between cells and their affinity to the specific antibodies our body produces upon exposure to the vaccine. But the good news is that this new variant is unlikely to be more deadly and is unlikely to actually have any effect on the effectiveness of the vaccines in circulation right now.